talk about the Old Testament and atonement. What does the Old Testament teach us about this very, very critical Christian doctrine? The word atonement in English is a fascinating one because it literally means at one meant. The early English translators of the uh, Bible were attempting to get a word that expressed what they found in the Old Testament. And there was no English word that quite expressed it all, and so they actually created this one, at one meant. Where does that come from? The Old Testament teaches us that sin, whether intentional or unintentional, results in consequences. This is part of our world. You do certain things and there are certain consequences that follow. Sin is the refusal, intentional or unintentional, to walk in the way that God has designed for us. And among the consequences is separation from God, a breaking of the fellowship between us and Him, and a resulting separation from the very source of life. So the question that the Old Testament is asking is, how do you reverse those consequences? What has to happen for us to become at one with God again? How can that fellowship be restored? And one of the things that they decided was that, and maybe that's the wrong way to say it, one of the things that was revealed to them was that somehow sin has to be covered over. It has to be blotted out. If you remember in Psalm 51, David cries out, blot out my transgression. Think about blotting. You are pouring something else over a stain that covers the stain and removes it in effect. And that's what's going on in the Old Testament. The word that is translated atone or atonement literally means, as best we can understand, to cover over. So how do you cover over sin? How do you remove its effects and restore that life-giving fellowship with God? The answer that the Hebrew people, again, I say discovered, but was revealed to them, was that the only sufficient covering for sin is blood. Blood which represents life. Only life can blot out death. Only death can blot out life. And so, in the various rituals of the Old Testament, you have the priests sprinkling blood. And the most significant expression of that is in the Day of Atonement. In the fall of the year, the pagans were celebrating the end of harvest with various festivals and orgies, and they were also weeping over the death of the vegetation god. If you gave him a really good funeral, if you demonstrated you were really, really sorry for his death, then there was hope that he would come back in the spring. The Hebrews are also celebrating and weeping. And they are celebrating the fact that God has preserved their life again through this good harvest as He preserved their ancestors through 40 years in the wilderness. And then they're weeping. And they are weeping for the unintentional sins that they have committed during the past year. Sacrifices are not for people who want to live like hell and still go to heaven. Sacrifices are for people who intend to live in fellowship with God, but know that in their shortcomings, they will probably have offended Him in a variety of ways. So, among other rituals on that Day of Atonement, when the people are fasting and weeping for their unintentional sins, the high priest goes into the Holy of Holies, the holy place, where in pagan temples, an idol has his bedroom, but in the Hebrew tabernacle and later temple, 
It's where the box of the covenant, we call it the Ark of the Covenant. That's a King James word. Ark means box. <laughs> the covenant box is there in that holy place. Inside the covenant box is the covenant, the two tablets that represent all of the covenant requirements. And that covenant cries out to God, these people have sinned. What are you going to do about it, God? In terms of your covenant requirements, you have to kill them. And God says, no, I don't have to, because the priest sprinkles blood on the covering of the ark. Now, it's fascinating, again, when you think of translation, Martin Luther, as he translated the Hebrew into German, and saw this word, the covering. And he knew that to cover means to blot out sin. And so he translated that term, the lid, the cover, with words that in English have been translated the mercy seat, the atonement place. The blood is sprinkled there. And there is an old hymn that says, When I see the blood, I will pass by. And so it is in the Old Testament. Life blots out death. The blood stands in the place and covers it over and means that it's possible for you and me to have fellowship with God. That, of course, all prefigures what God was to do, not merely symbolically or conceptually, but in fact, as Christ died and the life of God blotted out the sins of humans. So the Old Testament concept of atonement explains what's going on in the New Testament and provides the essential foundation for it. Thanks. Thanks.